Hey everybody! So I just filmed this for, or I was just on Periscope with this, and I could insert the Periscope video on YouTube and just stick a beginning and ending in it. Uh, and I may do that at the end of this video, um, or in a separate video if you guys choose to watch it, you can do that. Um, but I thought it would be nicer for the YouTube viewers for to actually get, you know, a kind of regular normal desktop view of what we're going to do. All right. So we are going to talk about... Remove these. The destruction of my Koi watercolor kit and my Winsor Newton kit, <laughs> which I did yesterday. <laughs> I know, right? So, you know, I saw Romney's Realm did this a while ago where she took her um, Koi kit apart. I don't think she went as far as I did. I don't remember now. It's been a long while since I watched her video. Um, she may have just cut the plastic apart. I, and I, I, I tend to think that's what she did do. But definitely, uh, if I can, I'll try to rem remember to link her video in the description below. But if I forget, somebody else put that in the comments. And definitely go to her channel and look for it. Um, I like my Koi watercolor kit. I like the selections of color in the kit. But, and I like the fact that it comes with a lot of mixing room. So it had, you know, the lid that you could mix in. Let me move my color key. Okay. It had the lid that you could mix in. It had this extra tray you could mix in. That was really great. This box is really big and bulky, and I'm not a big fan of plastic watercolor palettes. I prefer metal. It's easier to mix on. It's easier to keep clean if you want to keep it clean, although mine tend to look like this. Well loved. Um, I like this one because it's so small. I love the size. The color selection was not the greatest. I prefer a bigger color selection. There was no way you were going to get that in this box, even with putting three more colors in the lid, which I did here. Um, but the size is great. Obviously, much more, much different than this one. Um, I know from experience, from recent travels, that if you travel with your watercolor kits in a box, any kind of box, but especially one this size, the TSA security people are going to ask you to unpack your travel watercolor bag so they can look at the box. That's a pain in the neck. Just take my word for it. <laughs> so, when I got back, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. I really like this box. This is my schmink box and it is a really beautiful metal um, watercolor palette box and these boxes are made, a generic one is made without you know the schmink label on it that you can get and they come in different sizes. This is the 48 pan, half pan size and they, that's the biggest one I think. Um, they go as small as 12 half pan. So I thought about it and thought about it and I wasn't really exactly sure how big the 12 half pan one was but I thought you know it's not that expensive. Jackson's Art sells them through Amazon. They're about 20 bucks. I'm gonna try it. Um, now Jackson's Art is out of the UK so it takes longer to get here, but with shipping, it's still cheaper than ordering one of the comparable metal pallets that I can get in a US, from a U.S. Um, supplier. So um, it is a little cheaper if you go through Jackson's directly than it is through Jackson's through Amazon. <laughs> so I would go to jacksonsart.com. I will try to link them in the description below. And um, look, at, go to the search box and type empty metal pallet, and it's going to pop up. Make sure when you order it that you order empty watercolor pans. So these are empty. Well, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. These are empty watercolor pans. This one is a half pan. And it is, here's a ruler. So it's about an inch long, a little, little more than an inch. And this is a half pan. All right, so you want to make sure you get, um, depending on how many colors you want to put in your box, that you get some of these empty pans. I always have a selection of pans laying around and when I'm placing an order from Jackson's or Dick Blick or somebody and I need a couple extra bucks to get the free shipping, I usually order empty watercolor pans or something like this that I know I use a lot in my studio. And so I always have kind of a box with a few empty pans in it that I can use.
and I'll show you what I did with that small box. And I'm going to explain to you what this bag is in a minute. The Periscope people already learned what this bag is. <laughs> All right. So there you go. This is the 12 half pan box. It's a little bit smaller this way than the Windsor Newton, but it's a little wider and it's a little bit fatter, but it's very comparable in size. It holds 12 half pans or six full pans. Now, these metal boxes, and I'll show you with the big one, come with this removable tray, and this is what holds all your pans of watercolor paint. And this is just the box part with this removable tray. 12 is a lot of colors, but not for me. <laughs> So the first thing I did when I got it was take the tray out. This is the tray from this box because I knew right away that wasn't going to be enough colors. Now with these trays, this is made to hold 12 half pans, but I know from the bigger box you can actually get two more, one more on each row. So you can actually get 14 in here. In my 48 color box I have 52. Um, I've squeezed it in tight, things don't shift around, then they stay nice and tight in there. So, I took my new metal box, this is the color key that I've already made, and I did this to it. So, I took all of my um, watercolors out of the Winsor Newton set, yeah, and the Koi set, the colors are in this thin plastic tray. So I pulled it out and then I popped all the cakes out. This is what's, <laughs> what's left of that tray. Now, as I was taking them out, I took my color keys for those sets and I laid the cakes on top of the appropriate color so that I knew when I went to go rebuild the kit, which color was which name um, so that I could make a new color key. So as I did that, I picked the, my favorite colors from the Koi set for the, to put in the new set. I used five of my favorite Daniel Smith colors from Tubes to add to the new travel set. So now I have a really nice selection of really beautiful colors to take with me when I go on vacation. And I have all the spare, all the extra cakes here in small bags marked with the brand WN for Windsor Newton and then the color Viridian. This is a green. This is the Koi. This is ivory black. Now you'll notice the Windsor Newton ones come in a half pan. That's how they come in their in their kit. That's one up on the other guy because I love that. They were really easy to pop out. When this is empty, I can reuse the little half pan. <coughs> Excuse me. I can add some Viridian tube paint to that or something else and that's just really great. I love it. The Koi set were harder to get out because they're these dried little cakes that were like rubber cemented in, which is why this looks that way because they were a pain to get out. What I did do though, once I figured out what was going in here, I filled this first and then all the leftovers I put in these little bags and I labeled them and then I just put them in this sandwich bag. So I have this bag of spare paints that unless one of the uh, Daniel Smith ones gets emptied, which could happen. Um, I can refill those from the tube, but the rest of them I can just refill from something in here until I use them up. Now I also took the sponges out of the Koi kit. I had two sponges in the kit and they fit in right here and this is the little paintbrush from the Windsor Newton kit. I love this little paintbrush. It's a great little tra travel brush, isn't it fabulous? And it fits right on top of the sponges which squish down so when it closes it fits right in there snugly. And the pans now, should I decide when I'm traveling, I'm going someplace specific like Las Vegas, the desert, that I need to adjust my colors a little bit to be more desert appropriate. I can go back to my bag I can switch out some of the colors easily because these little pans have magnets on the back. So I put a magnet on the back of the pan, it sticks to the metal in the bottom of the box, just like that. It's not going to go anywhere. The sponges help keep them all 
tight and snug in there. And it's changeable. So I could, you know, switch them out. I can make it actually another color key at that time. And I would probably write on the back of it, travel palette desert selection. Or maybe I'm going to the beach and maybe I decide I need more blues. Although I don't know why I would because there's three in here. Um, or whatever. You know, I could label these for like desert selection, um, beach selection. Um, I, I am taking a trip to Alaska next year. Um, I, you know, Alaska trip. And I can adjust these out to be appropriate to the trip I'm going on very easily by just popping these cakes out and going to my bag, taking one of these, putting a magnet on the back of the little pan and sticking it in here and putting in the new color key in and putting this one in the bag and just constantly switching them out from here. I think that's a fabulous idea. This little uh, box is small. Has uh, Once I did this, by the way, and I took that this thing out, Instead of being able to get 12 to 14 colors in it, 21. Only three colors less than the Koi palette, which hold 24, right? So this gets 21 colors, and look how much smaller it is than the Koi box, right? The other thing I found when traveling, and I learn something new every time I travel, is that when you're traveling with watercolors, like I said, TSA is gonna want it. They're gonna want to have you take that watercolor box out of your travel kit because it is gonna be a problem. So if you have your watercolors in a red bag, like I had them in this one, you've got to pull the bag out, pull the box out, open it up so they can see it, then repack your bag. It, believe me, it's a giant pain in the neck. So now my bag will be packed in a way that I will have my watercolors in this bag, which fits inside that bag. All my watercolor stuff will be in here. This fits in here. And when TSA says, can we see that, or even before they do, when I'm putting my stuff on the conveyor belt to get checked through security, I can pull this out of the arginal bag, put it in its own bin for them to look at, and put the, an, the arginal bag in a different one. This opens up flat like a um, computer bag. This bag is by Tom Bin, B-I-H-N. I will, again, try to put the link in, all the links in the description below. If I forget one, somebody help me out. <laughs> Um, it has some pockets here in the cover for, I have pens, pencils, um, a mister, a water brush thing. I've got a little, this is a pouch from, uh, this is a day runner pouch. I have brushes in here, um, regular brushes and water brushes. Depending on where I am, um, I prefer to use regular brushes, but if I'm out like on a hike, I would make sure before I left that all my water brushes had water in them because I wouldn't want to br bring a cup of water. I have this Velcro pocket, which has a few core sample cards in it and a color wheel. An empty sheet protector pocket that I could put receipts, ephemera, inspiration pictures, or artwork in. It comes with this plastic dashboard. I put in this bookmark so that I could bookmark where I am, where the last painting is that I did in here. And then I filled it with watercolor paper. I also have a small watercolor block by fluid watercolor paper. This is a fluid watercolor block. This is four by six. And a couple of rags. And they fit in here really nicely. I have some peerless colors back here because God forbid I should not have enough colors. And inside this front zipper pocket I've got a plastic palette just in case I need more mixing room. But I definitely could say fit my hotel key card in one of these pockets and take this with me um, and a glass of water uh, down to the pool. You know, wherever I'm at, um, like I said, we're planning an Alaska trip, so I'd love to be sitting out at the pool, on the ship, you know, with a cocktail and my watercolor bag, just doing some painting. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, and this fits much nicer in my travel bag um, and is easier to get out when TSA asks me to get it out than the old setup was. And I have to repack my bag now because I unpacked it for Periscope, which I guess you guys will see because I'll... I'll either put it at the end of this video or I'll make it, I'll put a new video. But let me repack it and I'll show you. This is a watercolor journal I do bring with me and I do do paintings in here. I have some paintings in here from my last trip. These are from the Nevada trip. And this probably won't be done at the end of the year. This will probably be one of the journals that will take me a while to finish. But um, 
this is not a big deal to carry with the this watercolor bag. I can carry both of these, you know, down to the pool or whatever. Or if I don't want to bring this, I can just bring the paper that's in the bag. That works too. But this fits in here really nicely. I unpacked this for Periscope. Now I've got to repack it. So this was where my watercolor kit was, and th but this was a pain to get out of the travel bag and then repack when TSA wants to see wants to see my watercolor paint uh, paints. This was a pain in the neck to open. Um, so I knew after this trip that that was a problem. All right, so let's repack this. So I've gotten here. This I didn't show all of this on the last video on the Periscope. So. So there's an X-Acto knife and a small pair of scissors. Make sure that what you're bringing is um, going to be okay with the sec airline security. Um, they keep changing the rules, so make sure you check before you leave and adjust your bag accordingly. I haven't made any international trips in a while, um, but this bag has been through a few um, US trips without a problem, FYI. Um, Blending stump, stapler, little small hole punch, a couple of erasers. These little bowls are for water. Um, this has washi tape on it. These are fabulous. These are plastic um, embroidery floss bobbins. Somebody, one of you all gifted them to me with washi tape on it, or a couple of you. They're great. And they live in here. Um, a little small, this is a, for a pill box, but I have my small metal embellishments in it. Some little different texture tools, bubble wrap, burlap, little piece of a plastic shelf liner. Um, these are all washi tapes that I've been gifted. So this is when you guys gift me washi tape, it usually ends up in my travel bag at some point. Um, I'll show you about those in a minute. Little mini black stamp pad to go with my date stamp. staples for the stapler. That should not be in there. A uh, glue stick. And this is my mini set of colored pencils and spare pencils. So this I got at the Japanese dollar store. So and then the front of this, um, this is a Kipling 100 pen case. So the front of this I've got some pit pens, some water soluble pencils, and my Stabilo pencil, a mechanical pencil and that sort of thing, and a glue brush. This is There's a couple of glue brushes here. So this all closes. I love these cases. When I was in Las Vegas we were right next to the outlet mall and they had a Kipling outlet. It was fabulous. <laughs> Alright, and this fits in here. And I love the monkey, but he gets in the way sometimes. <coughs> there we go. This clip should be over here. Okay. So on the outside, I've got my pens and pencils, clips when I need them to hold my journal open, um, glue, collage, podge, gesso, Palette knives, baby wipes, Neo Color 2 is a small set. My watercolor bag fits in here. And so does my journal. And I can take this on the plane. It fits in the seat, underneath the seat in front of me. When I am going through security and they want to see the watercolors, I can just yank this out. Way easier to get out than the red bag. And it's just a really good solution, and I love this, and it's going to be this way now for a good long while. So I hope that gave you some ideas of what you could do, and um, stay tuned for the Periscope video. I hope it answers some more questions. I do show some new deco art helping artists stuff I just got in to help us finish the Monday with deco art canvas and work on future canvases. And um, we talk about a few other things. So I hope you all remember to have a great day. Um, don't forget all of my contact information is in the description below. So you have questions, comments, or concerns, you have ways to get a hold of me now. So never fear. I also have started a new Facebook group. So if you want to be part of that, uh, follow the link for that that's in the description below. And have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.
Hi guys. So this time we are going to be um, recording live while we're on Periscope. I'm going to turn the HD camera on in just a minute. So this time though we're going to try having uh, my phone here which is actually hanging off of my tool caddy. You guys probably have on your art desk somewhere those wood um, revolving tool twirly, I don't know what you call it, twirly thing. Hey Cindy, twirly thing. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> With all the little Martha Stewart makes one, recollection, recollections make one. Anyway, you're hanging on there. <laughs> Just FYI. Um, I think it'll be easier for you to um, see, well I'll see my face and I can see the comments easier when I'm looking at the phone. Um, but we're also going to record it for YouTube because I think there's some YouTubers who don't do Periscope, don't know what Periscope is that might want to see this and I know they've been asking. Thank you very much. Somebody just said you're very beautiful. Thank you. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Hi. All right. So we're going to turn the HD video camera on. Say hello as you join, if you would, and uh, let me know who you are. Introduce yourself to the group. Okay. I'm going to do my YouTube intro, okay? All right. Hey, everybody. So we are here today, and while I'm here filming you in the HD camera, we're also over that way on Periscope, and we're going to discuss the destruction of my Koi watercolor kit, because, yes, I spent some time yesterday <sighs> taking it apart. Okay, and this is what's left of it. I'll show you. Let's see. Okay, keep it clean, and whoever you are, Emerald, whoever, yeah, this is probably not the channel for you. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is what's, what's less left of my, okay, really? Block user. Okay, sorry guys, I just blocked somebody because, yeah, we have a problem. We might have another one. We'll see if he makes another comment. Hello. Anyway, this is what's left of my Koi watercolor kit. Really? Okay, that makes two. How many are we gonna have? Let's see. Let's try for three, shall we? All right. So anyway, this is what's left of my koi watercolor kit. I also took my Winsor Newton kit away uh, apart. You know that I have had a love-hate relationship with this kit. I love the size of the box. Love it. It's nice. It's small. Easy to take with you when you're traveling. Wasn't happy with the color selection in said kit. This is all that's left. <laughs> I took them all apart. So this one is really easy because the Winsor Newton kit had, um, hang on, let me get this out of here, okay, had the, the watercolors in here in already in half pans. I'll show you what I mean. This is an empty watercolor half pan. So the Winsor Newton pans It came just like this, with the watercolor already in the pan. Okay, so this one was easy. I was able to just pop the pans out with their color in them. Here's one that I didn't use that's in a bag. I labeled it Winsor Newton and Alizarin Crimson, the color it is, right? The Koi kit, this is a little different. So the Koi kit, you've got to pull the little cheap, inexpensive, plastic thing out of the kit. This is really, this is what's left. It pulled out kind of fairly easy. Um, it's glued down here. Um, and the sponges came out easy, but then when you go to take, try to take the little cakes out, this is what happens. Most people are not going to try to take the cakes out. So, you know, but when you do get them out, you just get these little blocks of hard Watercolor. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Block another one. You guys see any more? Let me know. Okay, so when you take the little cakes out, they look like this. Now, I like the Koi paints, and I think they're just as well pigmented as the Winsor Newton paints. Um, they These these are both not expensive. Um, I know, really? If you guys see another one, let me know. That was three. Um, 
This is just a small Winsor Newton travel kit. I don't think it was a artist grade. I think it was a student grade. I could be wrong. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm frequently wrong. So, um, but I think the Koi kit was just as good and fairly well pigmented and I can prove it. Here are the two color keys from the two kits. So I always liked the Windsor, the Koi kit because it had more colors. It had a purple, it had a Payne's gray, um, and it had a nice brown in it. Not And the Windsor Newton had a brown too, but it didn't have a purple and it didn't have a Payne's gray because the kit was just too small. Now I could have taken these pans out of here and replaced them with colors that I wanted to use. Of course I could have. And if you have this kit, and you have the same problem with it I did, you can either do what I did here and put some colors in the lid, but then you lose your mixing space, or you could take out the pans with the colors in them you don't use, get some empty half pans, put them in and fill it up with a color that you do want in here. Of course you could do that. If you have the 24 Winsor Newton set, you're gonna probably be much more happy with it than I was with this one. Like I said, the thing I liked best about it was the size, it just, the way it was configured is not big enough to hold another uh, enough colors for me. And yeah, the first thing I do when I make or get any kit is make a color key. Always, always, because the colors look different in their um, cake form than they do on paper, okay? So, that being said, <laughs> this is what's left of the Koi one. I know, Cindy, you're just cringing, but this is all that's left. <laughs> I took all of my a uh, little um, cakes of watercolor out of here. I know, see? And I actually, as I removed them, I stacked them on top of the color key as I removed them so I could keep track of which one was which because like I said, they don't look the same this way as they do on the paper. In fact, this one is cadmium red. This one's close. So here's the cadmium red and this is the cake. It's close. Where's one that's different? So here's this one. This is this yellow color, this one here. I don't know how, do you, how you pronounce that. I have no idea. So you guys aren't seeing that. I'm forgetting to show the other camera, see? Okay, so I'm showing Periscope. I'm not showing you guys. Maybe I should just film this twice? I don't know. We'll leave it on. I may decide to refilm this for YouTube after I'm done with you guys. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So then I went to um, jacksonsart.com. Um, um, they also sell... It would. It's a, You know, especially if you work um, in like 3D or in heavy texture. I know a lot of artists that do stuff on canvas with lots of texture and they glue things down and then gesso over the whole shebang and then do, do a painting. This would, and I don't know that I'm actually going to throw it away, throw it away because this is really, this is interesting. I know it's trash, but it's interesting, right? Um, okay, so then I went to jacksonsart.com. Um, you can also order from Jackson's Art through Amazon. They have an Amazon store. Now, you guys know that I have these big metal pallets. Um, these are big, these hold, these are supposed to hold 48 colors, but actually you can get four more cakes in here than they, they say, so you can get 52 in them. And then, and then the, um, the little pans are in here really nice and tight and they don't shift around. This is my schmink set. I like mixing my watercolors on the metal palette better than plastic. Um, I think it's easier to mix the colors together. Um, I also like that the metal doesn't stain, so if it gets to be too icky and my colors are too muddy because I've got too much on there, I can easily wipe it off and get it clean again. You can't always do that with the plastic, sometimes it stains, um, depending on the paint that you're using. Um, but like I said, I liked this small Winsor Newton kit for traveling. I realized that um, both Schmink um, and a number of other companies sell a version of this metal palette that only holds six full pans or 12 half pans. Um, now if you order it like from Schmink, it's really expensive. Jackson's Art, although it comes all the way from the UK, is a lot less expensive. And 
it, but it takes like two and a half weeks to come in. But look, <laughs> this is the Winsor Newton one. It's just slightly bigger. It's not a lot bigger. Now it's supposed to hold um, 12 half pans. And all of these pallets come with, I'll show you with the big one, let's see. All of these pallets come with these trays like this, and this is actually the insert that holds all of your pans of watercolor. And then the actual pallet box looks like this, okay? So the little one had one. Here it is right here. Now if you use this, you can only get 12 half pans in here. But, 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 if you take it out, if you take it out, Yeah, me and my butter, I need butter. Oh, cool. So if you take it out, I'll show you with the big one. So look how much you have a lot more room in the box than you have on here to get paint in. I can prove it. So I'm not going to do it with my bigger sets because I really don't have any need to. I just knocked a paint, a paint thing out of the schmink set. Hold on. It's gonna bug me now, I gotta fix it. There we go. All right, so if you take this out, I took a bunch of my little half pans and I, I glued a little piece of magnet to the back. See? They were, it was a sticky back magnet, but I thought, because this isn't a watercolor set and it's gonna be getting wet, that sticky might not stick. So I broke out the E6000 and I just put a little dab of, of E6000 on the back and glued the magnet to the back. And then I filled up my box and I was able to get 21 colors in my little box, which is just slightly less than the Koi. Right? The magnet idea is a great idea. Then I put my sponges here from the, um, these are the sponges that were in the Koi set. I turned them on their side and I shoved them in here. It not only gives me some place to sort of wipe my brush off on, um, but it also holds the pan up, the pans up tight in the box. And guess what else? This is the little brush from the Windsor Newton set. I have to tell you, this is my favorite part of the Windsor Newton set. And they may sell these brushes separately just by themselves. And if they do, I might have to get another one, but isn't that the cutest thing? It's a nice, round tip brush, great for water coloring. It's metal, so it's very durable. And look at how tiny it is. And guess what? It fits right here. The sponges are squishy, right? So I can just leave it there, fold in the mixing tray part, close the, I made a color key for it. And that will sit in the lid. I haven't laminated it yet. And I need to laminate it, but it'll sit in the lid and the whole thing closes up. <laughs> right? Now I took a few colors of the Koi set out because I wanted to include five of my favorite Daniel Smith colors in here. Um, I included and left, I included in here um, by Daniel Smith, Nickel Azo Yellow. I'll show you. So Nickel Azo Yellow, which is this one. Quidocridone Gold Deep. Um, Moon Glow, which is this dusky grayish blackish purple. It's a really cool color. Um, Rose, Rose of Ultramarine. And this really cool, look, hot pink. This is called opera pink. Yeah? All right. So now I have this new great travel watercolor kit that has, for me, the perfect colors in it that'll work just great for when I'm traveling. And if I ever decide I want to change up the color selection because I'm going someplace specific, like, for instance, the desert, back to Las Vegas, and maybe I want some more red earthy colors in here, like I have one. 
I even wrote earthy on it. Somewhere. Hold on to this one. So this is from the Koi set, and this is called Light Red. And it is this red clay color. And so this is a great color to stick into your watercolor kit. When you're going to like Las Vegas, if you're going to be going and you're going next week, well, if you have time, go to Red Rock Canyon or to Valley of the Fire because, oh my gosh, they're beautiful and there's lots of great inspiration. But if you're going next week, it's going to be hot. I should know. I've been there already. 106 the whole time we were there. <laughs> but this is a great color for um, going to the desert, this red clay color. But because my pans are in there with magnets, I can put this little cake into a pan, stick a magnet on the back, switch it out with a color that's already in here for the trip to Las Vegas. That works, right? Now I took all of my cakes that were in both the Koi set and the Windsor Newton set and I put them in these little bags and I labeled them with the brand and the color name. And these will go into my drawer where I keep my um, extra watercolors, my tubes and things. And um, I may take all these, I have a lot of these now, because <laughs> I, un I undid everything. So I may take all of these and put them in their own bag by themselves and then stick them in the drawer, because that way I can just grab the one big bag and dig through it when I want to switch a color out. The plan is to use these up in here um, before I go buying any more paint. I know, I say that, I keep saying that, I keep buying paint. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and as for these boxes, I don't know what to do with this except throw it away. It does have some paint in the lid, which is kind of a shame. Does anybody have any good ideas? I don't have any good ideas. And the Koi box now is interesting. Now, with the Winsor Newton box, of course, you could um, put new pans in here and put more color in here, or you could just use the wells as they are and put, fill it up with tube watercolors and let them dry. Definitely you could do that. With the Koi box, now the one thing about the Koi box that it was nice is it comes with, you of course can, um, yeah, fill it, yeah, fill it with paint. Yeah, I don't need, I know. Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, Mary, you're funny. <laughs> I know, I've been eyeing them, believe me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to put it on my Christmas list or something. The Koi box has a nice, you know, big lid to mix on and it also has, of course, the removable, removable mixing tray that you can kind of hang on the side. Um, but of course, now I've destroyed all the pans. But you can get these little empty pans at Jackson's, Dick Blick or wherever. They're not very expensive and you could, refill this with empty pans the thing is hi how are you um, the thing is you're gonna have to glue them in or you or um, I don't know so you would uh, you would probably want to put like a piece of chipboard here on the bottom I would think to level out the bottom and then put the good and then put the good thank you I have the good stuff so, and then put the half pans in here and glue them in. You could see if you could put a metal piece of metal in the bottom and then put magnets on the back of the half pans and put them in. Um, you'd have to know somebody who um, can um, cut metal. I might donate them to a friend. If you would like these, let me know. How much is which, how much is what, Goofy Bone? Hello, Lisa, how are you? Oh, there we go, headed in backwards. Oh, the little one? Okay, so the little one, I can tell you, hang on. Let me look at my computer, hang on. Give me one minute. Hopefully you're not asking questions because I'm not looking at the, com at the computer. Okay, through Amazon, it's $21.87, um, but I think it might be a little bit cheaper from Jackson's Art if you order it directly. Um, so I would look at their website first. 
Um, and either way, whether you order it from their website or you order it from um, Amazon, it takes the same amount of time. It takes about two to two and a half weeks because it's coming all the way from the UK. Jacksons, J-A-C-K-S-O-N-S art. Exactly, that's exactly it, Goofy Bone. Um, they have empty metal pallets and they also have full, this is a full pan and this is a half panned pan. Um, just type, go and type um, at the top in the search window, type empty metal pallet. This is gonna come up. This is the one that's labeled to hold 12 half pans or six full pans. And you're just, you're gonna wanna take this out if you wanna get as many colors at, out of it, in it, as I did. Um, I toyed with the idea of having my husband drill this out so I could pull these off and then I decided not to. Um, I may change my mind at some point if you've been watching me for a while on YouTube, YouTube or following me on social media. That was kind of a joke. I changed my mind a lot because you know. And order, order enough pans to make it work plus maybe a few extras. I keep this box of empty pans laying around um, because I am constantly like redoing my palettes for you know wherever it is that I'm going. Thanks for the hearts. I love the hearts. So um, I always, whenever I have to order something, especially if I don't quite have enough to like get free shipping, I order a few empty empty watercolor pans because I seem to always need them. And I was serious about these watercolor kits. If somebody would like these, um, um. Empty, pa empty boxes, you know, let me know and send me an email and I'll send them to you. Um, artist at Gina B. Aarons.com. Okay. First come, first served. So then my idea is another thing. The re one of the big reasons I did this. Okay. So as I'm traveling and I'm doing the Las Vegas thing, this is the first time I really brought serious watercoloring with me on vacation. And there were things about what I brought that I liked and didn't like. Um, I really liked being able to have my art journaling stuff with me, as I always do, for my year of my life journal, which is this. There's a video on this on my um, YouTube channel. Here's one of the pages I did while I was in Las Vegas. And usually when I'm traveling, I... <laughs> Okay, don't count on having the dining room table to like actually eat meals at or if there's a desk in the room being able to do anything at the desk because that's my space and I usually cover it with journaling stuff because who wouldn't? So I get up earlier than everybody else. Thank you, Mrs. Menopause. And uh, while they're all still sleeping and I'm having my first morning cup of coffee, I'm working on my journal pages from the day before on our trip. And... Um, by the time they get up, especially if you're in Las Vegas and it's 106, it's even hot inside with the air conditioning on, all of this glue dries really fast. By the time they get up, I'm ready to do my writing and actual journaling because all the glue and whatever is all done. I start out with my journal with um, pre-painted pages when I leave, by the way. They look like this before I leave the house. I do. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and um, there's a playlist, Year of My Life Journal, and that's what this is. And I have some baseball tickets and stuff from the game we went to the other day. I have to do a page. So this always comes with me. And the appropriate glues, markers, pens, and a few things come with me to work in this. What I liked about this last trip was I also had some of my watercolor stuff with me. But, and I had, hold on. Ugh. I've got my bag sitting next to me over here. So I had this, which was filled with watercolor stuff, and then this. That's really bulky. And I could pull this out, and like when we went to uh, Red Rock Canyon or Valley of the Fire, I could sit and I could do, you know, some watercoloring. And I loved being able to do this. And this is my watercolor travel journal. And, um, you know, I'll be doing, every time we travel, I'll be doing pages in here. Now, this will probably be one of the few journals I don't finish 
um, at the end of the year. I have this thing about finishing journals at the end of the year. This will probably just be one I just keep painting in until it's full. And it might take me a few years to get paintings all done in it. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. And I always, I, I may not always date the pages, but I always write like the place that we were um, or something about it. This was a sunset view actually from our hotel room. Yeah. So I loved being able to bring that with me, but this was kind of a lot. And I thought it might be kind of a nice to have like a bag in a bag. So I have my travel journal bag, which is this one. But what if I had a smaller bag in it that I could just pull that out that had all my watercolor stuff in it or a good selection of it. And I could take that with me, like say if we go on a hike, like we did the day we went to Red Rock Canyon. That would be good. And then everything else in here is for this journal. I like that. And I've made it through this bag, by the way, through the airport more than, more than once, not internationally. The bag, the bag actually comes plain, um, unpainted uh, from Harbor Freight. Um, you can go to harborfreight.com and look up the current the locations nearest you or order online. It's called a canvas riggers bag. And then I painted it. And yeah, that's my that's my handiwork. Um and I have it has a lot of pockets on the outside, so I've got all my pens, I've got some clips so I can hold my journal open. See you later, Cindy. I've got gel medium and glue, palette knives, what's in this side, baby wipes, neo colors, pencil sharpener, it's the one loose thing. So then what I did is I took all my other like small bits and pieces, um, ephemera, pencils, pens, and I put them in this red bag. I took all the watercolor stuff out, washi tape, I don't know which one of you sent me happy mail with washi tape like this. It is the best idea. So if you don't know, this is a embroidery bobbin, uh, embroidery floss bobbin. This is a pla it needs to be a plastic one. This is a plastic one. You wrap a little bit of your washi tape around it and you have this flat skinny thing full of washi tape that's really small that fits great in your travel journal bag. One of you all gifted them to me, and I love that. The only washies I have in here are ones you guys have gifted me. The other good idea, of course, is to wrap them around an old gift card. I know, right? It's a great idea. And um, one of you all, might have been Cindy, gave me some copper. So, and this is a paper, paper bobbin, and that would work, but the plastic one is better. The plastic one is more durable, and the uh, this tape won't stick to the paper. I mean to the plastic. So I took all my bits and pieces, my mini ink pad, my mini colored pencils. Yeah, these are mini colored pencils. From the Japanese dollar store. Aren't they cool? Um, little bits of metal ephemera. My date stamp. It's probably the biggest thing in here, a little stapler. So all that fits in this red bag, which fits in the travel journal bag. I have a few pieces of paper. Kill me now. <laughs> I know, right? I have a few pieces of paper and um, a little mini um, cutting mat and a ruler, because I do carry a small X-Acto knife with me, which so far has not been a problem flying. Although, like I said, I haven't done an international flight since I put this bag together, but in the U.S. at least hasn't been a problem. Then I thought, okay, that's much better. I like that. And there's still room for this in the bag. I like that. Now I need to do something about the bag in the bag. This koi box is just way too big. This one I don't like. It didn't have enough colors. Hence buying this one with the 21 colors. Perfect. This fits in that bag. My bag within a bag. This is a Tom Bin bag, but you could use a lot of different things. You could... Um, you could use a cosmetic bag. You could use an old planner that zips up. You could use anything. Um, this bag has a pocket on the outside, which I can stick the journal in, or right now I have my 
Peerless watercolors in it. It has a pocket on the outside, which you can stick, you know, inspiration photos or something like that in. Right now I have a plastic mixing palette in it, which, you know, again, I don't really like plastic palettes, but sometimes when you're out and about and you just, you need an extra place. This one, and I should take it out of the wrapper, this one was from Hobby Lobby, 99 cents. So that's a cheap, like, little plastic tray you can just keep with. It's not the best thing on the planet, but it'll work in a pinch. Now I gotta get it back in here. So, you know, my fat fingers are in there. Now this one is more like a planner that zips up because it has a binder inside. So technically speaking, I don't even have to bring the journal. I could just bring this bag. I put in a zipper pocket for brushes in the front and a few pencils. Um, this is just from the, uh, yeah, 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 like Franklin Covey planner section of your office supply store. I had a bunch of these laying around my office. This is a different kind of planner pocket or mini binder pocket. Mini binder stuff fits in here. Um, cause this, the binder rings are the same as in a bin, mini binder. Um, I have a sheet protector in here. At some point I want to put an art artwork or something in there. Or like if you are out with the watercolor kit and you pick up little bits of ephemera to use in the other journal, or you pick up inspiration photos, you can just stick them in here. Something flat. It comes with this black plastic like dashboard. And then I put this bookmark here so I could like bookmark where I'm at, where, where's the last painting that I did. And then I filled it up with watercolor paper. I put, uh, I have room enough for another little smaller pad of paper because you know, you gotta have extra paper, right? And then I have a couple of rags back here. And then the lid has some little pockets in the front that have a ruler, some pens, a little mini spray bottle, a mister, um, a water brush, and the only thing is my metal box is not quite skinny enough to fit in this empty pocket right here. So I may take a seam ripper to it and pull out the stitches right here and move my ruler over somewhere else or take out the stitches to this pocket on this side of it Yes, it is. Um, so that I can get this metal kit in here. And this does shut up with this kit in it. It's, it seals up fine. So the plan is for my watercolor kit, travel water, this is my travel watercolor kit. It has everything in here I need. And it fits in my other bag so I can have my watercolor bag in a bag. Right? And I can just pull this out and go when we go hiking, when we're traveling. The other thing, reason for doing this, Every time I travel, I learn something new. <laughs> so when you are flying with watercolors in a box, TSA is going to want you to open up the box. They're going to want you to dig it out of the bottom of your bag so they can look at what that box is in your bag. Guess how I know that. <laughs> so this is easier to pull out of the other travel bag than the red thing is. The red thing fits in there great, but it fits in there very snugly. This would, I can just pull the handles, take it out, open it up, lay it out flat in one of those trays when you go through security, yeah? Um, and then put the other rest of the art stuff in another bin and I'm good to go. I did that with the red one on the way home, but it was a big pain in the neck repacking the bag. This is a lot easier, has short handles, a long handle, so like I said, we're out walking around, I can just take this with me. I can extend this so it's a cross body bag. So I love it. Thank you, Tom Bin. Now Tom Bin, and it's spelled B-I-H-N. This is their field journal bag. It's actually discontinued. I'm sorry, but they do have some old stock. So if you go to the Tom Bin website and you call them or email them, yeah, the colors will be limited, but they do have some old stock, so I would check with them. It comes with paper, which of course I took out because I wanted watercolor paper in it, but they are supposed to be working on a newer, improved version. Of course, I don't want to wait because who knows when that's going to be, right? And I happen to love this color. This was something they called, I think this is the red. 
It's more of a burgundy color, but uh, you know, it's a good color. So it all fits in the in the other bag. Now it's not going to fit in there because now it's a big mess. <laughs> so now the only loose thing in my bag is the pencil sharpener, <laughs> which you have to have one of those. Does anybody have any questions? Hello, Melanie. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. So yeah, when you're traveling with your art journal, hi, how are you? Thank you. Um, so when you're traveling with your art supplies, you know, you're going to, you know, every time I travel, I refine my travel bag. Um, will I ever stop refining the bag? Probably not. <laughs> but um, I learn something new every time, and um, some of that has to do with, you know, the... Um, security people, you know, constantly changing their mind on what is allowed, not allowed on the plane. Um, so it's always good to, um, and I'll answer that in a minute, Mary. It's always good to check, um, with, um, your airlines about what is and isn't allowed on the planes before you leave home. And, um, yes, I do have a long watercolor video on my YouTube channel that just posted that is like an hour long. And I go through almost all the watercolor paints I own. I do sometimes travel with tubes of paint. Usually, it's because I bought tubes while I was on vacation and have to bring them home and I don't want to check them. <laughs> um, but the tubes are usually not a problem because they're not very big. Um, okay, here's the two tubes I brought home from Las Vegas. Um, I know, right? So these are um, Blick Artist Watercolors. Now, Dick Blick and Utrecht which are the, see, two hours. See, I don't even know. It was long. Um, um, Dick Blick and Utrecht are owned by the same people, and they have their own brand of watercolors, which I actually really like, um, especially for basic colors like sepia, which I bought, which I seem to use a lot, when I, at least when I'm at home. I use a lot of sepia. And also, of course, Payne's Gray, a color I use a lot in acrylic and watercolor. Um, and they were really inexpensive and... Um, I talked the husband into like letting me go, so yeah. Um, but these are not a problem because they're not real big. They're only 0.47 US fluid ounces, 14 ml. So um, that video will post next week, I believe, the sunset video. Um, so these tubes are usually not a problem with bringing. Trick for opening caps on watercolor. These caps are not a problem opening. Um, see ya. Um, the caps I have a problem with are my acrylic paints, like my artist paints. They're a pain in the neck. I don't know. Excuse me, the only trick I can tell you is pliers. <laughs> um, in fact, if I was carrying those kind of paints with me, um, um, or, yeah, okay, Mary, or older uh, watercolor tubes um, that maybe the paint has dried on the lid, um, uh, I would put a pair, little pair of pliers in your kit because that's um, really the only way I've gotten um, tubes like that open and I have some of that problem usually like I said it's with my acrylic paints uh, Windsor Newton love your acrylic paint hate your lid Grumbacher too nice paint sucky lid okay well you know the worst case scenario if you can't get the lid off and it's just it's sealed on there is not coming off yeah, I got a tip for you. <laughs> Take your tube, turn it upside down, cut the end off. <laughs> cut this end off. Squeeze the entire thing out into a new container. <laughs> um, you can get those little tiny, like, Gladware containers that are, I think they're meant for salad dressing or something. You can also get little small, different kind of tightly sealable containers for soy sauce or things at, like, the Japanese dollar store. There's all kinds of, even the dollar store has small resealable containers. You can get ones that are intended for acrylic paints. Um, like, wait a minute. Depending on how much watercolor paint you have. I'll show you what I mean. I just picked some up on clearance at Hobby Lobby. These are not them, but these are like them. So at the arts and crafts store, you can get, you know, a bunch of these little tiny containers. 
The lids fit pretty tightly. You could squeeze the tube of watercolor out into here after you cut the end off and then just put it in a new container because if this is really sealed tightly shut, it is not going to come off. I think you're stuck. The only other thing I could tell you would be to try soaking the tip in some water and see if it loosens up the dried up watercolor paint there. That might work. Yeah, exactly. Your kids' paint comes in those. I use them for making up my... These are my travel paints. I do carry a few acrylic paints with me. Um, and there's some glitter glue in there. See, now I'm on camera. I'm not going to get that back together on camera. <laughs> um, but, but that's what I would do. Yeah, save the little containers for travel. Um, but you could also try just getting a really shallow little small dish and um, just soaking the top of the paint tube in the water for a little while and seeing if that loosens up the lid. It might, because it is water-soluble paint, so it might. Um, and you might try that before you butcher it and cut it open. But also remember, you know, I know with a lot of these tubes, whether it's acrylic or watercolor, when you think you've squeezed the last bit of paint out, you haven't squeezed any of the rest of the paint out. There's still paint in there. So I always cut the tubes open and I use some kind of a craft stick or a palette knife and I scrape out the rest of the paint. You'd be surprised how much is still in there. I know, right? I do that with acrylic paint, and there's a lot of paint still left in there. Any more questions? I'm so glad you guys could be here with me today, because, of course, again, this is a last-minute thing. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to have to refilm for YouTube. I may leave some of these clips in here, but, yeah, they can't see anything of what I'm doing <laughs> at all. <laughs> do I paint night scenes? I do sometimes, yeah. Um... It's been a while since I did one, but I think I might have something that's a night scene in acrylic coming up for Monday with Deco Art when we're done with the current canvas that we're working on. Um, I used to teach for Michaels, and um, Grumbacher sponsors those classes, by the way, so check your local Michaels store because they do have a lot of really great acrylic painting lessons. One of them is a night scene with trees that you might like. But yes, I and I, I think I have I have the urge to paint a canvas and to start out with it black and do something like that. So and I have some deco art black gesso I want to try. So I think that might be our next canvas piece for Monday with Deco Art. F see there, a little hidden tip. <laughs> oh, and I can show you guys what I just got from Deco Art today. I got a box from Deco Art. If you want to see. I love the hearts. Thank you so much. Yes, okay. So today I got a surprise, well, not really a surprise from DecoArt. I ordered some things, some, some, uh, re like refills. So I wanted, I needed some more already. <laughs> All right, nobody who knows me will be surprised. I needed some more DecoArt traditions. I don't have my glasses on, can you tell? Um, Art, this is their artist, Traditions Artist Acrylic Aquamarine because, you know, I'm almost out already. Because, <laughs> you know, anybody who knows me, you're not surprised, right? Um, and then I wanted some of their satin varnish, which I haven't tried yet. I needed some more fabric painting medium. I know, right? Um, and this, I don't know what this is, but I thought I would order it and try it. No idea what cream wax. I didn't know if it was something we could use to like keep pages unsticky, like maybe Daddy Vans ish. Might try it. And this is a drying time extender. So to you know extend the drying time of your acrylic paint so it doesn't dry so fast. And then that's not all I got. And then I ordered some deco uh, Americana deco page paper. So these are their collage papers, and they're like tissue, and they come in different collections, right? So this is Old World. This one is Tribal. Ship to Shore. I love this one because it's very blueprinty. Ooh, you know how I am about blueprints, you guys. Uh, Moroccan. Right? These are great. 
um, eye cat. And this is a great way to get little, these aren't very expensive and it's a great way to get small selections of different kinds of tissue without having to do a million swaps. I mean, we all love a good swap, but you know, this is another great way to add to your collection. This one is called Victorian Romance. Okay, who's watched Secret Soto redoing her lampshade? Like this one right here, looks like that blue napkin she put used on her nap on her lampshade. I love that. Arrows. Safari Life. Gold Trends. Gold Basics. Because you know you got who doesn't love metallic? Silver basics, because you know you can't have the gold without the silver, right? Metallic type. Can you not just see that on a journal page? I know, gold, right? Yeah, Mary, right? Gold. They have gold. You need the gold one, Mary. Paisley punch. Gold stag. My husband's birthday is coming up, so I may have to um, use some of this in a card for him. How much? Let's see if they have the price on here. This is Silver Trends. Whoops. And this one is Vintage Silhouette. Now I know you can order these from the DecoArt website. I don't know how much they are, but they're not, I know they're not expensive, but it doesn't say on here. I don't remember. Maybe somebody can look it up and type it in the comments really quick. These are Deco Page Papers by Americana. Um, they should be on the decoart.com website. Maybe one of you guys can look it up for me really quick. Then, you know, we're working on our canvas, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have the Monday with Deco Art series and we're doing a mixed media canvas using only Deco Art products, or at least mostly Deco Art products, yeah? Okay, I think we're only up to step three, but here it is after step four. Okay, so when we do step five, that will involve maybe adding a little more paint, maybe adding a little more doodling, and I'll answer that paint question in just a minute. So I knew, I knew they made something I wanted to try on the canvas, and, but it, I didn't see it on the supply list for the Helping Artist program. And so I emailed our coordinator, and I said, you know, I know you make this thing. Is there any way I could get some? Because I have this canvas series I'm working on, and I really would like to use them on that canvas. They sent me all of the colors. I only wanted, I only needed black and white. And I did buy a black and white one from Amazon. Hi, Di, how are you? Um, and I tried them here on my painty drop paper, which is covered with smears of acrylic paint and glue. And they work like a charm. I gotta tell you guys, these might be, might be my new favorite paint pen. So these are DecoArt glass paint markers. They're intended for writing on non-porous surfaces but it's basically a paint pen, yeah? So they have gold, white, look at that pink. Um, this turquoise color, I'm looking to see, yeah, it's called turquoise. Citron, lime green, violet, black, brown, yes they do, uh, silver, I'll show you in a minute, I've got my drop paper right in front of me, I used them on there, um, orange, red, they sent me all of them, yay, um, this is just blue, but it's a really pretty blue, yellow, and green. So they sent me all of them. I, I, that was so great and unexpected. Now we can use them on our canvas and we aren't just um, relegated to only black and white, right? So
so you see this black marker here this is the black glass paint pen and this is covered in acrylic paint and this is just plain drop paper like packing paper let's see if I can show you the white one that's the white glass paint pen right there that's the white one I love I love the white one I think you know it's not super opaque but it's not translucent either it's something in between I like it a lot and that's probably because it's meant to write on non porous surfaces but it works great on uh, paper and uh, paper covered in acrylic and it doesn't you know smear it's you know I love it I think they're great they're a great thing and they're not very expensive and probably a lot easier to find than uh, Posca I love my Posca pens but they're a little hard to find so that's what I got from DecoArt. So now we are all ready for me to film part five because I've got to film the last part for the canvas and then we can start a new one. And maybe we'll be using some of these papers on the new canvas. I'm not sure yet. So any more questions? Now my desk is a disaster. I found my YooHoo stick die. <laughs> I needed some more YooHoo and I couldn't find my, I knew I had extra in here somewhere. But I put it away. I couldn't find it. So I've been using scotch. This one. It works okay. You're welcome. But I prefer my Yoohoo. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so, yeah, so I did a comparison video um, where we compared some of the DecoArt paints to... Um, golden and um, specifically the DecoArt fluid acrylic paints to golden fluid acrylics now um, while they're in some cases or most cases more translucent and a little bit less pigmented than the golden I like them just as much as but they're a fraction of the price and their traditions artist acrylics are nice now they're not as heavy body so if you're really were used to working with a heavy body paint that really gives you a lot of texture um, then you won't like these because they're very fluid and more the consistency of craft paint but better pigmented um, but you could mix them with a gel medium um, to make them more heavy body uh, I like them though I find working with them really nice and they jelly plate really well FYI they do great backgrounds um, I've used nothing but deco art paints on this um, and you see all these bright colors um, some of these are their neon craft paints. So, um, some of these are their fluid acrylics, um, their Traditions Artist paint. Um, I don't have too many of their craft paints. I only have the neons. So most of these are their artist kind of paints, and I really like them. Um, and if you want to see more about um, how they work and using them, then um, watch the Monday and Deco Art series where we work on this canvas. But um, I'd say it's a good buy. You know, Golden is great paint. We all love Golden. I love um, Grumbacher paint, Windsor Newton paint. Some of that's really expensive, though. Golden especially. Um, they're fabulous paints, but especially if you're just doing it as a hobby or you're just starting out, I would think about buying something like the Deco Art Traditions paint because I, I love them. You just might have to get them online because I don't know that there's a good selection of the paints and colors around in your local craft store. Um, I haven't seen a lot of them. Not consistently. Um, so you might have to order them online. That's kind of a drawback. Any other questions? Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. Oh, you're welcome. It's all good. And if you have any more questions after you watch the um, my YouTube channel, uh, my contact information is in the description. And you can... Um, get a hold there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me they're called deco art media paints uh, hang on let's see there's one of the other ones okay so the two types of paints I have okay now I like the Americana neons I've always liked the Americana neons and before I started as a deco art helping artist 
um, I had to, I had the Americana neons. So go to your craft aisle at Michaels or Joann's and they'll have Americana neon paints. My three favorite ones, if you can only buy three, yellow, orange, and pink. Okay. If you can afford a couple more, get green and blue. <laughs> um, so the other kind of Americana paints I have that I love are DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics, and these are very comparable to Golden Fluid Acrylics. They look like this. And this particular one, the Cobalt, Cobalt Turquoise, it is a great color. I just picked that up by accident, by the way. Um, and then the other one I have is the DecoArt Traditions Artist Acrylic Paint which is, I love it, it's the consistency of a craft paint, but it's pigmented like an artist paint. So it's got more pigment, um, a deep, excuse me, I just ate lunch, a deeper, richer color than your um, uh, craft paint. Um, but it has that same kind of uh, not fluid, not heavy body, kind of in the middle of the road consistency. You could thicken it up, I said, like I said, with like a heavy gel medium, um, and that make it more heavy body that way if you wanted. Um, both of these mix really well with their um, fabric medium, which I love, um, to turn them into fabric paint. So you don't have to buy tons of fabric paint, you just need fabric medium. And you mix these 50-50 with the fabric medium. I think it was 50-50, I don't know. Might have been less. Two thirds, one third? Read the bottle. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all the hearts. I love the hearts. I'm definitely going to have to refilm this for YouTube. <laughs> I haven't been paying attention to that camera at all. <laughs> Maybe I'll use this bag for the little... <laughs> my little cakes. So now I have all these little cakes. Spare cakes. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. So as we wrap it up here and I get on camera to film for YouTube, I want you all to remember one thing. Go out and do something nice for yourself. You deserve it. Yeah? All right. Do some art. Do something creative. Take a walk. Enjoy your kids' laughter while you can when they're little because when they're adults, you know. You know. <laughs> Mine is never home anymore. She's 20. She's at work again got to make them living, I guess. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Di, you know what? Big hugs to you. And you know, if you ever need to chat, um, just message me in Facebook and you know, that goes for all of you. My contact information is at the bottom of all my YouTube videos. So if you want to get a hold of me, you know how, and I will talk to you all later. Have a great weekend. Okay. Bye.